if you are a real estate investor or wholesaler and you're struggling with putting deals on the contract and then not being able to sell them, what is the problem? Is the problem you? Is the problem the deal? Is the problem the marketing channel? It's a question I get very often. And it could be a variety of different things. Number one, are you genuinely putting under contract a good deal? Because you could be putting under contract a deal that you think is great, numbers are great, or appear to be great, but you're either misdiagnosing uh, the property and the market that it's located in, so you don't really know the nuances of that market or you can't really, you don't know how to underwrite that property properly. And so you're making a decision thinking it's a deal, but it's not a deal. Now, it could also be that the market is way too small, right? It could be just so rural that even though it may appear to be a great deal, the time it takes for a buyer to come through and want to buy a property in that particular area is, is so long that it would take forever to sell or there's not enough investor activity in that area. And so therefore, you know, what you think is a good deal might be a good deal from a price perspective, but in terms of your ability in order to get that deal sold and find a buyer is, uh, it's very small, you know, it's gonna be tough for you to find a buyer for that particular property. So number one I would look at is, are you underwriting these deals properly? Another issue is that you don't have the right process systems and or resources to find a buyer. You could be going on Craigslist, going on Facebook Marketplace, posting these deals, but you're getting a lot of tire kickers and looky-loos and nobody's really buying your property, but it's not really that the property isn't good, it's just that your buyers are crap and they're really not the right prospect. So we recently had a deal that we had one of our partners was not able to sell in our, one of our programs. And so they tried for three or four days, couldn't find a buyer. They enlisted our help in order to find a buyer uh, using our tools, which you can look at the description to see what tools we use. Uh, we were able to find a buyer and it ended up being a $21,000 property uh, assignment. So here's a, a situation where if they would have given up or left to their own, they would have said, oh, this is not a deal. We got to cancel it. And now they don't have that money in their bank account. Guess what? We were able to make it happen. Why? Well, we had the resources available to us in order to find the buyers. So that's another potential issue is that. Do you have the resources? Another potential issue is that you might have way too many deals on the contract or chasing way too many deals, trying to make everything happen. And in the end, you end up just shooting yourself in the foot because then rather than going and putting in 110% effort on a particular deal that will turn out to be a twenty-one, or, you know, $20,000, $15,000 assignment, you end up chasing a bunch of deals and because you have so many deals, you can't really spend that much time on them because the clock is ticking. And in the end, you sell none of them because you basically didn't go deep on the right ones and caused by, whoa, 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 see that? That was a bird, that bird is attacking me. Every time I pass by that tree, that's my neighbor's tree, it attacks the crap out of me. Did you see that? Oh, my life is in danger here. Now I lost my train of thought. Last but not least is that you could be putting the wrong type of properties um, on the contract. Condos, for example, I don't deal with condos. They're a pain in the butt, uh, difficult with the associations, uh, there was a story, who did I hear this from? Uh, I think RJ Bates posted a video about how he had a condo and then the condo building had a right of first refusal and so somebody ended up buying the unit, took the deal right under him. So condos are difficult, vacant land, properties in very rural areas, properties that are vacant and have been vacant for a very long time and so therefore they're in such bad shape that it's just so difficult to get someone to want that property. Another type of bad property is when you have an owner that has like 20 acres and the house is cheap and you're like, oh my God, this is such an amazing opportunity. Look at all the sacred. But you want to deal with commoditized housing, meaning houses, cookie cutter houses that you can easily comp, cookie cutter houses in areas where it's easy to determine what the value is, that there's a demand for that. And so you might be just going after the wrong properties. And so because of that, you end up chasing your tail and not selling any of them. The last but not least is you're chasing after skinny deals. By skinny deals, meaning that it's a very slim deal, right? 
um, you're thinking you're going to make five, seven K on the deal. It's stretching, you know, what you're buying it for and what the market value is. It's a bit of a stretch. And um, you got you to gotta have deals that you're putting together where you're going to make at least 20 grand, 15. You know, our average assignment fee is 15. I mean, some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, but you only get to an average of 15 if you shoot to get properties at enough of a discount where you can make a 30K spread. Because then by the time you negotiate with the end buyer, then you'll end up less. You also have to put enough spread in there so that the end buyer gets a good deal. Because when you have a good deal, it's easier to sell. It's easier to get people's attention. So if you got skinny deals, you're gonna have a skinny wallet because skinny deals are hard to sell. And that's where working with somebody who knows what they're doing is the ideal situation, right? Even if you're gonna give up some of your money initially, but you're gonna cut the learning curve significantly. I remember when I first started as a real estate investor, you know, I went to work for a particular investor and I helped them buy and sell 50 properties that particular year. I got paid crap for it. But the experience that I got from helping him buy 50 deals, that means how many deals did I need to look at? Hundreds and hundreds of deals. And so I accelerated my progress simply because I was doing a lot of repetition and I had somebody that was right there in the trenches with me telling me, yeah, that's a deal, not a deal. Yes, a deal, not a deal. So that's what you need. Now you can get that through mentoring. We have a program, a partner program, which we can help you with. You can do that with maybe working with somebody in your local area. Could be a friend that's gonna help you. It doesn't really matter. But really that's the best way to shortcut this because a lot of times you could be spinning your wheels and you don't really know why you're spinning your wheels. So how do you keep your mindset at the right place when you've got all these ups and downs in the business? Well, check out this video that appears here, right here. Details specifically, the right mindset to have and how to set your goals appropriately so that as you come to these obstacles, they're not gonna derail you and you have the better chance of being a successful real estate investor or wholesaler.